the stages of your business. Now, I want to, this, this really segues good into this, right? So there's obviously five stages. The first stage is startup. Now, before I get into this, um, I, oh, I, I kind of already had like this. So the first stage is startup, right? Just so you know, startup is usually, and it doesn't matter how many pr deals you're doing, to a certain degree, you can go up to about 24, even 36 deals a year could still be a startup. And what I mean by startup is you're still, make, you're still doing the lead generation, you're still doing the follow-up, you're still doing the presentations, you're still doing the escrows. You may have a TC or something like that, but you don't have a team where you've got splits and you're paying payroll and you don't have that kind of stuff. That is a startup business. Very, very profitable. As you can see, the profit is very high. And I'm blown away how some people will want to go build a team. And I'm like, well, why do you want to build a team? And it's basically because they see other people doing it and there's all this production, there's all this stuff. Like one of the things I've always loved is just flying under the radar in business. I've always loved that. My brother's that. If you see my brother, you would be like, this guy's broke. No, he's not. But he just looks like the dude next door. I just always love that. He's a highly profitable human being, but he's not flashy. Warren Buffett. Like you sit here and I need to hustle more. Really? Do you know what Warren Buffett's schedule is? Wakes up in the morning. You know what he eats for breakfast? McDonald's. McDonald's. He goes and eats <laughs> McDonald's. He gets to McDonald's on the way. Do you know what he drives? Yeah, he drives like a, a Cadillac. Yeah, I think it's a Bonneville. Yeah, an old Cadillac. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Like just <laughs> drives a Cadillac, doesn't sell it. Goes, and then we're like, well, he must hustle while he's at work. So it's, it doesn't matter when you wake up, it's what you do with the time. Yeah, he reads for six out of the eight hours of the day. He reads, and then he goes home, spends time with his wife. How much money you guys make last year? How much Warren Buffett make? I feel like I got screwed. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to work. Like, how come I can't do that? I can go just flip around on TikTok. Now he's not doing it. He's reading important things. But something to consider is Warren Buffett is extremely profitable. And when somebody asked him, why do you think you're so much, such, so much more successful than other investors? He said, because nobody likes the get rich slow plan. That's what he said. Nobody likes the get rich slow plan. And I, that's me. I just, I get rich slow. And by the time you notice, I'm already, I'm already way ahead. And so what I want you to know is you can be very highly profitable here, meaning you're taking 80% of your commissions home, maybe 70% of your commissions home. Now in the startup, what does it say you have to master? Right? The, so, so yeah, the skill to master is what? Sales. It's what? Sales. It's what? Sales. It's sales. It isn't marketing, it isn't uh, all this other stuff, it is you selling. Because even if you market and generate leads, if you can't speak to them and convert, it doesn't much matter. You'll spend a lot of money, you'll be like, these leads suck. No, mm. <laughs> hate to tell you the truth, but the mirror, it's the mirror effect. They're actually not. They're actually, and I, I usually use this for my coaching clients, well, the, these leads aren't good. Okay, so if I call those leads, you're gonna give me all the commission for it and you do all the business? You do all the work, I'll call it. If I convert them, you do all the work and give me the commission, all of it. Well, well that's, no. No, 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 I don't want to, no, I'll, I'll call them. <laughs> yeah, because it's, a, it's an excuse to a certain degree. And here's what I would say. You're okay to say leads are crap. You're okay to say that if you have data. If you have data. So there's some big teams that will hire me to coach their salespeople. I don't know why they do it, pay a lot of money for it. Um, but I train their salespeople and their salespeople will be like, this script stinks. I want to use your, yours better. I'm going to go to the team leader. I'm going to tell them your script's better. I'm like, eh, 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 eh. So for those of you on a team, I'm going to give you a little insight about how you operate on a team. I'm like, you don't just go to the team leader and be like, this script sucks that you gave me. Coach David's is better. You don't do that because it's an opinion. And nobody's going to move their business model based on opinion. And you shouldn't. It should be based on data. I said, so what you should do is you should take one week, call with that script. One week, call with that script and come back and go, hey, um, I'm not sure what to do. Uh, I did a test and I want to know what you think. I've got two scripts, script A, script B. Script A got us two appointments last week. Script B got us 10. Which one do you want me to use? Uh, script B. Cool, that's not your script. <laughs> <laughs> but the data, and I said, you have to understand this. You're, you think your team leader's sitting there going, I got their ass. Got them all these crappy leads, have them slaving it over, not making any money. Idiots, look at them. They're not doing that. They're spending a lot of money hoping that you convert so that they make money. And so you need to understand, like, they've spent money on those leads. If you're saying something like, these leads are no good, what did you just do to the code? Two plus two is five. 
and now you're getting bad output. It, it's not necessary, right? So, but in the, in the startup, sales is the thing to master. It's the high, most profitable thing. So you want to develop, on sh uh, develop sharpening your skills around selling, prospecting, lead follow-up, presentation. But here's what's interesting. In that startup phase, you get this feeling of like excitement. It's almost like a, you're naive. You're just all possibility. You remember getting your license? How many of you remember when you got your license? You were like, I just won the damn lottery. <laughs> I'm going to sell houses, and I'm going to be rich. <laughs> and that's how you feel in the startup. You feel like that, right? And then you move on to stage two, which is the roller coaster ride emotionally and financially, where you start to make a little, and if, if you get out of that phase and you've got enough profit, now you start investing into marketing. And that's the second thing you need to master in the growth phase, which is where you start. And by the way, you could be at 12, it's not, it's not 12 deals, 24, 45, or whatever. It's more of where you feel comfortable. Could you be at 24 deals and start marketing more? Yes, of course you could. Every business is different. But what you need to understand is like, if you don't have anything to do with well, David, you don't understand. I'm working on my deal. No S. Deal. One deal. I'm working on my deal. I don't have time. You definitely, 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 definitely have time to go sell and make calls. And if I went back into real estate tomorrow, that is what I would stay right in startup mode. You can make 500000 to a million dollars. Here's, and here's the difference. If we go through all these, over here, this is where you've, and I'll, I'll go through the other ones. And the creative phase is where you have systematically, and I'm working with some coaching clients now, that are trying to move themselves from the business. And what they're having challenge with is as they remove themselves from the business, the culture's collapsing because of the people they hired, and that's a hiring issue. Because a culture is just people, that's all it is. Um, and what you need to understand is, well, that sounds good, right? I build this business, I have agents working under me, and I get out of it, I'm on the beach sipping a Mai Tai, and don't let me know if you need anything. <laughs> and I'm just enjoying myself. Okay, but your profit margin is going to be down here. It's just, it just is. I have a lot of coaching clients that I can get to about 56% in this, in this mode. Not in this mode. In this mode, it drops to like 30. But most agents, um, I've even heard some companies say you can't get higher than 35, 40%. And I'm like, don't tell them what we're doing, whatever you do. Um, but you need to understand that while you keep 80% of the deals you do here, you're not going to make as much over here. You have to do more deals. Yep. In the culture, are they still in production? Yeah, I'm going to get to that. I, I skipped ahead a little bit, so I'll, I'll go through these phases, right? Yeah, in culture, they're still in production. Creative, you have moved away from production, and you're doing other things like trying to become a coach, <laughs> <laughs> which they're like, man, this is hard. I'm like, <laughs> you don't have to tell me, dude. It's, it's not easy. Um, so in growth mode, most top, top agents, most of my 100K per month earners are in this zone. They're one of those two. But what I will say is this, how many of us are in startup trying to pretend like we're in scale or culture? So let me go to scale. Scale is where you're starting to do deals and you feel overwhelmed and you've got a lot of deals, there's not enough time, there's too much to do. And the skill to master there is what? It's what? Recruiting. It's recruiting. Working with Robert Lee on this. Like, Robert, you need to go recruit. He's like, oh man, I don't know what to say. I'm like, you realize that when you say that to me, how are you going to help agents know what to say in prospect? Recruiting is just another name for selling and prospecting. That's all it is. I don't know why we call it recruiting. It should just be still prospecting. And so that skill has to be mastered. You won't grow at that phase if you're trying to get to scale without being able to recruit. And recruiting comes down to hiring, interviewing, and, and all those kinds of things. And what most people will do is they make a lot of mistakes hiring because they don't know how to do it yet. They pretend like you know, the fake it till you make it. It's pretty expensive. But you, you want to know how to recruit and who you're recruiting. Most people, when they start recruiting, they'll take anybody. They're just like, breathe on that mirror. Yep, condensation, you're in. <laughs> and that's how they recruit, as opposed to who's my ideal agent? Who do I want? Like, it's one of the things I love about you. George won't let people on his team that aren't aligned. he would be like, nope, 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 and just patient as the day is long. That is how you build a business. The slow way is the fast way. When you just start hiring people, you're just like, oh, you want, you know what that's like? That's like going into the dating world and just saying yes to everybody. I can't figure out why I keep running into psychos. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I happen to choose all the wrong guys. I happen to choose all the wrong girls. No, you're just choosing anybody that likes you. I used to do that. I used to be like, do you like me? I'm in. <laughs> in high school, I was just like, do you like me? Oh, I'm in. Yes, let's go on a date for sure. Until I realized, wait a minute, what the hell's going on with me, right? 
So recruiting, and by the way, recruiting and selling, which you'll see tomorrow, has a lot more to do with attracting than it does going after people. So, and then you move to the, um, you move to the culture phase, which is where you don't feel optimized, and you're looking to create an environment that starts to produce and outproduce you. That's really what you're looking for. Like if you're doing, if you're doing 75 deals yourself, you want them to do 75 deals, and you're doing 25. And that most of your time is supported on accountability, coaching, inspiring, providing, those kinds of things. Um, and ultimately, that's a whole different skill set, right? Is creating a culture that believes what you believe. And we're going to, I think it's later today, we're going to get into how do you develop that kind of culture. Because even if you're your, your own little business, you can have a culture too. And then there's the creative, which is where you want duplicatable, predictable, and you're outsourcing. You're pretty much not doing any of it. You have just systematized with people, money, process, those kinds of things. And you've moved away from the business. I'm saying all this because people think they want this. I want to build a team, I want to build a team, I want to build a team. But much like my, my story with Sue, Sue was right here and making $750,000 a year and keeping, before taxes, 80% of it. Actually, 90% of it with the broker she was at. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty good gig. And it's not like she was overworking. Was she working hard? Yeah, she was working hard. And she wanted to build a team. And here's, here's the other thing. People want to build a team who are crappy leaders. Well, that's not your thing. If you're not a good leader, it doesn't make it saying, I'm a crappy, I'll, I'll give you an example, Scott Davidson, doing 150 deals a year. He's still doing 150 deals a year, golfs four times a week, but doesn't have a big team. And you know what he said to me? I realized, I'm a crappy manager. But most people would be like, no, come on, don't say that about yourself. You're a good manager. You need to acknowledge, stop lying to yourself. If you are like, no, I'm a great leader, I'm a great manager. You either need to, and you're not, the results aren't there, you either need to get good at it or give it up and stop trying to build a team. And just make, ultimately, why are you doing it? Now, you may be doing it to, in the world's that? You may be doing it because you want to be a, a leader and you want, in that case, let's work on your leadership skills. There are skill sets around that. You can become a great leader or, you may find, I hate leading. I would rather just go do my deals and make a lot of money, and either one is okay. Yeah? 